Hey guys, David Patrick Green, davidpatrickgreen.com, hackhollywood.com, actorpower.com. Hack Hollywood. Yeah, baby. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to give you guys a basic intro acting lesson that could be the only acting lesson you really ever need. Okay, so let's talk about acting. There are so many different schools of thought. There is Method, there is Meisner, which are similar in many respects, which came from Stanislavski out of Russia. I don't know where Stanislavski got his theories from, probably some other Russian guy. Uh, there is also the British school of thought, which was more of an external indication method. So rather than actually going through it all, just figure out what it would look like because the audience doesn't know what you're thinking. And that's perfectly true. So there's a lot of different techniques and I've studied a lot of them and I've studied for years and years and I've done lots of audition classes and cold reading classes and technique classes, including Meisner and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, method, um, based on um, Strasberg and there's Stella Adler. Strasberg, Adler, and Meisner, they all kind of were the circle in the square theater, I believe. But, uh, you know, they, they developed sort of their method, then they split off because they couldn't agree, right? So if they can't agree, then something's missing, right? Because at the end of the day, we all know what it looks like when someone's doing a good job. So why can't we all just agree on how to do it? So here is my gross simplification of how to act. First, you start with the facts. And once you have the facts, you don't speak and you don't do anything until you have a thought or a feeling based on those facts. And that is pretty much all of it in a nutshell, okay? Start with the facts, and then once you have a thought or a feeling based on those facts and how they affect you, that is when you are allowed to speak or do something. So it's really five things. We'll see if they really are five things. Start with the facts, have a thought or a feeling, then speak or do something. That's, that's it. Got to make sure that the five are up there. Facts, uh, thought or a feeling, then speak or do something. Okay, that's that's it. That's it. Now, you're, you're going, well, what are the facts? What's that mean? What are facts? Well, the facts are just the story broken up into pieces and basically broken up into what comes before the camera is looking at you to do or say something. So... The facts of the story, I mean, look at simple stories like that we tell, uh, tell children, you know, uh, the story of the three pigs, uh, the story of Cinderella, the story of Snow White. These are very simple stories with very simple facts. And they're, they're simple uh, because we, tell, we can tell them to a child and the child understands them perfectly. They don't ask a lot of questions. They don't go, well, what's the backstory on Cinderella? Um, where did she come from and where did she go to school? We... This is the beauty of really good storytelling is that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, incite the reader to ask a bunch of questions. It, is, it arrives at the right time and then, and, then, and then it leaves at the right time. So we're like, uh-huh, Snow White, it was a woman living in the woods and she lived with seven dwarves. Okay, fine. What do I need more than that? That's the, where we're starting from. Um, the three pigs were walking in the woods and they saw, uh, no, or the three pigs were at home and this wolf came along, you know? Okay, fine. We're not, you know, kids don't ask a bunch of dumb questions. Neither should you. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the pigs parents were. It doesn't matter where they were originally from. None of that matters. What matters is what the audience is looking at because they can't see all this backstory that you're going to make up. All they have is the facts, and basically that's what the facts are. The facts are what the audience can see. They can see where you are. They can see who else is in the scene. Uh, they'll get whatever explanation the writer feels is needed. 
uh, through visual assistance. But the facts are just where, where, what's within the box, okay? Those are the facts of a movie or a TV show. There's really nothing more. There may be some information that came from another scene, and that is part of the story, right? So that's all the facts are, is the, the little parts that make up the story. Snow White lived in a house in the woods with seven dwarfs. Okay, um, but there was a jealous queen who was jealous uh, because somebody told her, or mirror, her mirror told her that uh, Snow White was prettier than her. So the queen was mad because she wanted to be the most beautiful. We don't need any more motivation from that. We just need to know that she's an extremely jealous person and that it's really important for her to want to be the most beautiful in the land. Whatever. Hey, <laughs> if that's your thing, go with it, right? It's the exact same thing in all other acting, okay? All you do is you start with the story, okay? So break the story down into a fairy tale-like story. So for instance, I just did a scene uh, as a newscaster. Okay. Well, I was actually a news producer in a, or news director in a news van. Okay. So I had nothing to go by because they didn't give me the before or the after. So what am I going to do? All right. Well, what's, what are the facts? The facts are that this guy is in a news van and he uh, the screen freezes, so he thinks, or the screen is frozen, so he thinks, he, uh, well, so he says, um, he says, camera for give me live coverage. So from that fact that I say give me live coverage, that implies that I think the screen is frozen. I say camera for give me live coverage, your camera is locked, okay? So by saying give me coverage and that the, the, it's locked, that means I think that the screen is locked because this guy has turned off his camera or he's put it onto hold or whatever, you know, so that, um, well, what the reason for that is probably that if you leave your camera on and some, suddenly, you know, it's showing something that it shouldn't be showing, like, you know, the back of the uh, engineer's butt when he's bending over, uh, you know, or the cameraman goes to the bathroom and he's got his camera with him and you see the inside of the toilet stall or whatever. So there, there's a, a lock on the camera. Okay, so that's all I need to know is that I want the camera to be on because I say so and that I think that it's locked. So that's what my fact is. Um, but, you know, the whole scene is, okay, uh, cam the screen is frozen, so I say camera four, give me live coverage, your camera's locked. I get nothing back. Eddie, do you copy? I need a follow shot. Your camera is locked. I repeat it, okay? That is the entire scene. Okay, so what are the facts? The facts are I'm in a news van. There's a couple other people in there, it says so. Uh, I'm talking to someone whose name is Eddie, and I think his camera is locked, and I want it to be on because I'm trying to get a shot of this situation, which is a big, basically a protest uh, at the UN. So I am basically trying to do that. And then when he doesn't answer me, I have to say, hey, do you hear me? And he doesn't answer. Well, actually, I don't really give him a chance to answer. And again, this you don't really know. You have to kind of go with it because there's no facts. So nobody's talking back to you and... So you carry on. Eddie, do you copy? I need a camera. Uh, I need a follow shot. Your camera is locked. So I basically repeat it. So those are the facts. And you can also ask yourself, why is the scene there? Well, it's very hard to figure out why the scene's there when you don't have the before and the after or any other part of the script. But what I might say is that uh, the screen is there to show what we just discussed, that the fact. And so for whatever reason... That's, they've inserted this scene in here to show that this screen is locked because, because it coincides with something else before, so that it's relevant to what else is going on. And in, they also tell the guy, well, the, I don't 
get to hear from the guy for a reason as well, and that has something to do with either what went on before this scene or what goes on after this scene. But it's really not that important to prepare. What you need to do is just honor those facts. Now you can make something up, like you can you can add to it. Like you don't know what the relationship is between you and this guy Eddie, right?、Um, so you could maybe say, "This has happened before," or "He's the kind of guy who sleeps on the job," which might give you a kind of thing where you look at the screen and it's locked, and you're like, "Camera four, give me live coverage." You know you're locked. Like this has happened before, and then nothing. And you're like, okay, this is where you maybe go. Okay, this this hasn't happened before. Usually he goes, oh yeah, sorry boss,、uh, I got、gotcha. you. But he doesn't answer at all. So then you're like, Eddie, you know, do do you copy? Where the heck are you? Right? It's like that's what's going on. But all of that stuff is sort of, it's an accessory to the truth. It it isn't the truth as it's written. And the most important thing is to honor the truth as it's written. Okay, so you just re- behave as you would as a newscaster or a news director trying to run this news program, and these are the facts given to you. Okay, so that's all you have to insert is yourself playing that guy, and those are the facts. And so I wouldn't say anything until. I figured out how I felt, right? Like, what's going on? How do I feel? And what do I think? And now, what am I going to do to get my desired result to take us to the next fact? So I might say, okay,、um, I'm looking at the screen. It's frozen. I think it's Eddie because I say I think it's Eddie,、um, and I'm going to go with.、Uh, This has happened before, so I'll see it, and I'm like, the the screen is frozen. It's probably Eddie again. You know, this he's probably taking a smoke break or whatever. So then I I'm like, camera four, give me live coverage. You're locked, okay? Maybe not in that slow method, but that's basically where I'm coming from. I'm having a thought. And so I'm going to talk to him to wake him up. Okay, so maybe that's my thought process. And you know, this is all up to you. I'm you make these decisions based on what you know. And then, what's your reaction? You know, what are your reactions as a news director? And remember that you're th- what you're there to do. You tr- got to try and figure that out. The main thing is to actually get these points across to introduce these facts to the audience. That is by far the most important thing. Everything after that can either enhance or distract or detract from the scene. So if you have the wrong instincts, let's say you go, "Oh, maybe I'm a crazy newscaster." Hey, hey, camera four, give me live coverage. You're, you're locked, right? Well, that might cause the audience to go, "What's wrong with him?" Right? Which is not the point. The point of the scene is not to figure out what's wrong with the newscaster. It's to figure out why is the screen locked. That is the point, and the reason you know that is with a smaller role, you're probably not there to go into depth about you and your backstory and your character. With a smaller role, it's about the facts, right? And you can add to make it more interesting, but it's very risky because you may go off down the wrong path. You may not go down the yellow brick road. You may go into the scary forest. So it's really important to. Stick to the facts as much as possible, and then just trust your instincts. So, if I see that my camera is locked, and I'm a newscaster, and I want it to be on, and you know, there's not ten scenes before where we're building up to a point. It's just like, you know, why is that thing locked? Hey, camera four, give me live coverage. You're locked. Like, I don't know what the reason is, but I just need you to unlock it. That's kind of where I'm coming from at that point. And if I don't get anything back, then I'm gonna go. You know, that's. Eddie, do you copy? I need a camera shot. I need a follow shot. Your camera is locked. Like, come on, let's go. And that's basically it, right? If I throw in anything else, then it risks taking the audience off on a detour, a red herring, so to speak, 
where you're dragging them off in a dis uh, in a different direction and they kind of wonder what happened to the story. The story is not going off on this other direction. It has to do with what's going on right here and right now, which is the camera is locked. The audience needs to know why it's locked and that's why that's where we're going with this. Oh, the camera's locked. The audience is doing this in real time with me. The camera is locked. And they're all thinking, why is it locked? At the same time I'm thinking it. So I get to talk to Eddie. I get to be their voice. I get to go, hey, what's going on? Get that camera going. Because that's what they want to know. Well, get the camera going. Hmm, that's strange. No response. Now we're going into the next scene that I'm not in, but that's where the story is going. It's now probably going to reveal why that screen is frozen. Is it a locked camera or is it something else? And so that is really the key is to stick to the facts, understand if you have a big part or a small part that you may have a, a slightly different role, but you know what, the more information they give you, the more you'll have to work from so you can have thoughts and feelings. But if there's no information, then don't add a lot of information, okay? Like the bigger the part, they want you to think and feel more because you'll have more facts to go by. Smaller part, less facts to go by, so they want you to add less, okay? It's not needed. Now, interestingly, as this um, scene was directed, I did it a few times the way I just described, and then for an alternative, they said, you know, let's let's be more frustrated with Eddie. And that was where I got the chance to kind of do an eye roll. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to see something going on in this uh, field where the cameras are all pointed and the thing is locked. And, and I'm like, oh, this is camera four. Well, who's camera four? It's, it's Eddie. And, you know, it's, <sighs> camera four, give me, you know, give me live coverage. You're locked. Ugh. Eddie, not again, right? That kind of a thing. And so we did that. I don't know which one they'll use. And I don't think it'll make that much difference because that was the introduction of me as a character, okay? There wasn't a lot of buildup to it. So I have a feeling they'll go with the more factual-based one. They won't go with the more fun one because the audience isn't privy to my eye rolling. They'll never get a chance to see Eddie, to my knowledge. And, uh, and so... They will get their facts across by simply delivering the facts. Okay, the facts are that I'm upset that it's locked and that I want it to be unlocked. That's about all they need to know because the audience needs to know that too. Oh, this, this news director is showing us that he's unhappy that the camera is locked. He wants it to be on and it should be on. So what's going on? Okay, because that's all they're really trying to do is get the audience's curiosity, curiosity to match my own and then that'll make them want to go see the next scene. That's what they're doing. They're trying to get the audience's interest in seeing the next scene. So we're taking the story from before. I don't know what happened before. Something's going on, probably somewhere where our cameras are focused. Something happens whereby the camera appears frozen, and I guess that's what all we know. We don't know if the scene itself is frozen we just know the cameras are frozen and so the audience doesn't know either because they're not in on it yet and so when I verify that I can't get a hold of the cameraman then I know I need to go find out more and so does the audience so I'm gonna go on my journey and they're gonna go on theirs and I don't know where their journey is going to take them it's probably gonna take them back out of the van where they get to see what's really going on. Whereas I'm stuck in the van, I don't get to leave, but I do have one more scene that comes a little after where things become a little unstuck and I have my reaction to that. But guys, I just wanted to reinforce, that is the basics of acting, okay? All of the stuff you guys hear about all this mental work. Sure, you can do a lot of mental work and getting yourself emotionally prepared, um, trying to understand situations, but we all have instincts and someone tells you a story, like if you read a book, you understand how the people feel. They don't have to explain it. They don't have to explain a million different things. We just inherently know what we need to know and good writers inherently know 
what to write that's enough for the audience to carry on. Like the idea is to write as little as possible and so that the audience can still stick with the story because the audience's imagination is far more powerful than what the writer can write. You can write a few words, but the audience can read something and just see this infinite universe of possibilities in their mind based on their own life and experiences and, and who knows what else. So all we have to do is just give them enough information so that their imagination can take them on that journey. That's why movies are never, well, very seldom as good as the book because when we read the book, our imaginations take us all kinds of places that a camera and technology could never do. So remember guys, start with the facts, then you will have a feeling from that information and develop a thought based on that feeling of what am I going to say or do and understand what, what the story is. The, the story of your scene is this. A guy's watching a screen and this is where it becomes a fairy tale, okay? There once was a newscaster in a van. He was watching his screen and noticed that nobody was moving in the picture. So he thought the camera was frozen. He contacted his cameraman and said, hey, camera four, give me live coverage. You're locked. The cameraman doesn't respond. So the news director says, hey, Eddie, do you copy? I need a follow shot because he needed a follow shot. Your camera is locked, he repeated. Still nothing. That is the story, right? That's the whole story of the scene. You can get into the why and the how and all of that crazy stuff if you want, but I don't know that it's really going to help you because every single one of us as a child, and we probably could do it now as an adult if we can get over our embarrassment, we can play all of the fairy tales. We can play the three pigs. We could play Goldilocks and the three bears. We could play Snow White. You know, I can play Snow White right now. I don't need any instructions. I'd just be like, dum to dum to dum I'm happy Snow White and I'm working and there's the dwarves. Oh, hi, Sneezy. Hi, Sleepy. I'm a happy princess in the forest, right? Or whatever Snow White was. Um, and so that means that you can play pretty much anything too, but you need to know the story first. And then once you get the story, then you just live through it. Just don't add any facts that aren't there because that's when you're going to get yourself in trouble. Because if the writer didn't write it, he doesn't want it in his, in his movie or his TV show. Okay. Don't start trying to rewrite the script because that's really what choices are is rewriting the script. And so even when the director said, hey, let's make it so that you're frustrated with Eddie as though this has happened before. Well, that director just gave me a rewrite, basically, because it doesn't say that in the script. Um, we had to make it up just to see if it would add to the scene, but not distract. Okay, make the scene more interesting, make my performance more interesting. Like, ha, 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 that crazy Eddie. Maybe he is a slacker. Maybe the screen is frozen, right? It's, it's a tiny little distraction, which is okay, because it's a little red herring to just make the audience freeze in place for a second so that their minds don't try and jump ahead because it is the tendency of people to try and figure out the ending before the ending comes, right? So it was a teeny little red herring he threw out there. And you know, maybe you can get away with that if you're really smart and sophisticated. Hey, I'm going to make this guy whatever, uh, to distract so that the audience, uh, doesn't try and jump ahead. They want to, they want the audience to think for a second, maybe it is Eddie and his locked camera. But you know, the fact that it's Eddie's fourth time doing this probably doesn't change anything except maybe it makes a little more of a relationship between me and Eddie and they can think about that for a little. Oh, he seems frustrated with Eddie as though this has happened before. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. You know, meanwhile, it distracts them from jumping ahead to, okay, the camera's locked. Well, I know why the camera's locked because uh, I bet you that, you know, there's like superpowers going on outside or whatever like that. So 
Guys, all of that stuff is mental gymnastics and it's, and it's irrelevant. If you want to be a successful actor, learn to act the facts, okay? Facts create feelings and thoughts which lead to talk and action. And that's all I'm going to give you. Kind of a short one for a change, maybe. Uh, so anyway, guys, if you like this, if you found it useful, please like it. And uh, please share it with your friends, your fellow actors. Come on, we have to all help each other out. I'm doing this for you, for free, to help you out. And I, Because you know what success is all about? It's people helping people. If you help people with the right skills at a high level, then they will help you back at a high level. So, um, yeah, just do what you think is the right thing to do. And if you like these videos, subscribe to my channel so you'll get notifications of more of them. If you change your notification settings, I will talk to you soon.